So let's look now at the more efficient implementation of FIR filter. So more efficient implementation of an FIR filter. So now the the problem so far is that that our delay buffer here, so this was our delay buffer here, and that we were shoveling the data every time step here along and then doing our sum. So this was this shift here this was happening every time step. That's obviously very, very inefficient. So the solution to this is to have a so-called ring buffer. So what's a ring buffer? A ring buffer is where the data is just stored in this way here and we just define basically an offset and at this offset we just store our new data and then we increase the offset instead of shifting it so so our so our offset just defines basically where where our delay line starts and then we are storing the new value here so first it goes in here next time step the new value goes in here and so on and so on. So every time step we are just storing the new value at another place here and we just define the offset here as the start of our delay line here. So the offset is then the start of the delay line instead of shifting everything around. So that's the idea of this and this offset is changing at every time step. It's increased. Okay, so how do we do this in an efficient implementation? Um, that's a very nice implementation written by Graham Hutton, which we have here. So this is this filter here. So it gets an input again, just a single value, gets an output here out. And then we've got here these this um, a bit cryptic C construction here. So how does that work? Let's just move it away and just draw this here. So the problem, the so in a real implementation, obviously, a ring in C doesn't exist, so we still have an array. Yeah, so that's our our array. So that's our array. So now we define somewhere here our offset. Which is increased at every time step. So let's we'll say offset, we store our new data. Store new data. And then we're defining defining a loop which is running backwards. So we have a loop which runs this way because then we know this here corresponds to no delay so we multiply this here with h of 0 and then the next one here this one here so we multiply this with h of 1 and then the next one here we are multiplying with h of 2 and so on and so on and um, just summing this here up this then gives us our output so now we are, when we are reaching here at the beginning 
what we do is we just wrap it around. So what we do is we just move our pointer to the beginning here again and, and do the rest here. So then this is obviously another edge here. So then at this point here we're just wrapping around here. Let's have a look in the code how this works. So we have here, this is our starting point of our buffer here. So this is buffer plus offset. Yeah, so the buffer variable is our starting point here and offset defines our offset here. Yeah, so if I just draw this in here, so that's that's buffer. Let's go back to our browser here. Let's just move this a bit a bit to the side and we see and we see both of them. So we've got here the buffer variable, that's our offset here. So then we're storing our input, so the new data here, new data goes into this point here. So this is what where offset points to. And so now we do the first while loop is here where the buffer value is running, is um, decreasing from this point here. So buffer value here. This is starting here and decreasing. So this is this bit here. And we are adding, and so we are multiplying this up with the coefficients and storing this here in our output variable. So at some point we are essentially here at this point here. And so now we need to do this wrap around here. Yeah, so the wrap around is essentially then this here. Yeah, so that's our wrap around where this is starting here again and then we do the rest of the summation until we are reaching essentially here this end here. So once we have done this we're just increasing the offset variable by one time step from here to here and then the whole function is done. So that's a very efficient implementation so I encourage everybody to check out this FIR function here and also the whole function which we turned into a nice git repository here and you can check this out and play with this FIR filter function in C.